after learning this uh, module you will be able to understand in detail the meaning of the concept cointegration the various tests for detecting cointegration the error correction mechanism let us try to understand first of all the cointegration and its meaning the concept of cointegration was enunciated by Granger in 1981 and Angel in 1987. Cointegration studies the short run and long run dynamics of the series and links short run behavior with long run behavior. It is said that if there is a long run relationship between two given series, then they are said to be cointegrated. For example, if yt is integrated with i1 and xt is also distributed as i1, if yt minus beta xt becomes i0, then this process is called cointegration. In economic terms, if two variables have a long term or equilibrium relationship, they will be cointegrated. Let's discuss the concept in a little more detail. Say there are two series, yt distributed as i1, xt distributed as i1. And if we regress y on x such that yt is equal to beta1 plus beta2 xt plus mu t, rewriting this as yt minus beta1 minus beta2 xt equal to mu t, if we test mu t for a stationarity using unit root tests and find it to be stationary which means i0 then the linear combination of the two non-stationary series is stationary. Hence we can conclude that the two variables x and y are cointegrated. So cointegrating combinations are equilibria so it is important to be able to discover and model these relationships. Further, it must be noted that if the series are cointegrated, in that case, the regression is justified. Moreover, adding or subtracting a constant from a cointegrating equation does not alter its properties. An alternative approach to the analysis of long run equilibrium relationship would be to analyze the relationships between the differences of the series that is among i0 series. However, this approach is only concerned with short run movements while it throws useful long run information. Let us now try to explore the tests for cointegration. We have different tests for cointegration known as Angel Granger test, CRDW test, and Johansson's test, which are briefly summarized in our figure 1. Let us discuss them in detail one by one. The first test which we are going to discuss is Enzel Granger test. As the name suggests, the test was formulated by Enzel and Granger in 1981 using the following formulations. They defined yt equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 xt plus mu t. If the above formulation is stationary, then the series is said to be cointegrated in nature. Further, taking the first difference of the error terms, we get delta mu t equal to gamma mu t minus 1 plus epsilon t. Here gamma follows Angel Granger critical values. So after calculating the value of gamma, we need to compare it with the table values. If the calculated value is less than the table value, then the series is said to be non-stationary in nature. However, if the reverse takes place, that is, calculated value is greater than the table value, then the series is said to be stationary in nature. There are a few drawbacks of the Angel Granger approach. First, it does not allow for estimation 
of more than one cointegrating regression. It may be noted here that if we have n variables, then there can be at most n minus 1 cointegrating relationships. Another problem with the Angel Granger test is the order in which variables enter the cointegrating regression. When we have more than two variables, we have to decide which of the regression and which the regressor is. The third problem with the approach is in dealing with multiple time series where we not only have to consider finding more than one cointegrating relationship, but then we will also have to deal with the error correction term, which is going to be discussed in detail later for each cointegrating relationship. As a result, bivariate error correction model will not work. Then we would have to consider vector error correction model or briefly known as VECM. Let's now move on and discuss about the cointegrating regression Durbin Watson test or known as CRDW test. The CRDW test, unlike the previous one, uses D values. As discussed in earlier modules, perhaps you must have come across these D values. The D value is calculated using the following formula, which is that D is equal to 2 into 1 minus rho hat. In case of a unit root, rho hat is equal to 1. Rho hat is nothing but the estimated correlation coefficient. Therefore, D is equal to 2 into 1 minus 1 when rho hat is equal to 1 and therefore D comes out to be equal to 0. Also, it must be remembered that if D is equal to 0, then the series is non-stationary in nature because if D is equal to 0, then we are saying it will be non-stationarity because D is 0 when rho hat is equal to 1. We have just now discuss that. So using the above base methodology, we then formulate our null as well as alternate hypothesis as follows. The null hypothesis H0 is that D is equal to 0, which means uh, unit root implying non-stationarity. The alternative hypothesis H1 is that D is not equal to 0, implying stationarity. If the calculated value is less than the table value, we accept our null hypothesis stating that the series is non-stationary in nature. While in the opposite case, when the calculated value is greater than the table value, we accept our alternate hypothesis implying that the series is stationary in nature. A point to note here is that if the two series are not cointegrated, then any linear combination taking them into consideration would be non-stationary in nature. So this is a very important point which you must uh, note here. Let us look at the third approach which is the Johansson's approach to cointegration. Johansson's test is considered to be one of the most superior tests for cointegration due to the fact that it contains all the statistical properties desirable in any testing. However, it faces some criticisms as well. The test depends too much on the asymptotic properties. As a result, it is very sensitive to the specification errors in a small or limited samples. Johansson suggested a method to determine the number of cointegrating vectors in a model and also to estimate the distinct relationships between them. He used the generalization of Dickey-Fuller test which is represented as follows. That is delta yt is equal to a1 minus 1 into yt minus 1 
plus mu t. In the standard Dickey-Fuller test, we are concerned with establishing whether the coefficient of y t minus 1 is significantly negative. Now consider its generalization to n variables. So let x t is equal to a1 x t minus 1 plus mu t, where x t is the vector of variables. As a result, delta x t is equal to a1 x t minus 1 minus x t minus 1 plus mu t. We get delta x t equal to a t minus i into x t minus 1 plus mu t. Further simplifying it, we get delta x t equal to pi x t minus 1 plus mu t. Here x t and mu t are the n into 1 vectors and a1 is the n by n matrix of parameters. The rank of pi shows the number of co-integrating vectors in the model. A point to remember here is that if there are r co-integrating vectors, then only r linear combinations would be stationary in nature. Rest all others would contain the property of non-stationarity. Let us now in this section understand the difference between tests of co-integrations and tests of unit root. David A. Dickey and Dennis M. Jensen and Daniel A. Thornton stated that there is a difference between the tests for unit root and for cointegration. In their research article, namely, a primer on cointegration with an application to money and income, published in 1991, they stated that tests for unit root are performed on univariate, that is, basically single variable time series. In contrast, cointegration deals with the relationship among a group of variables where unconditionally each has a unit root. So if the two time series y and x are integrated of different orders, then the error term in the regression of y and x is not stationary and this regression equation is said to be unbalanced. On the other hand, if the two variables are integrated of the same order, then the regression equation is said to be a balanced regression equation. Let's now look at spurious versus cointegrating relationships in section 3.5. In a spurious regression problem, the completely unrelated time series may appear to be related using conventional testing procedures. Suppose yt is equal to beta yt minus 1 plus mu t, where mu t is independently and identically distributed normally with mean 0 and variance sigma mu square and xt is equal to beta xt minus 1 plus epsilon t, where epsilon t is also iid normally with 0 mean and sigma epsilon e square with mu t and e t independent i e which means basically that expected value mu t and epsilon s is equal to 0 for all t and s. So when beta is equal to 1, y t and x t are random walks which would imply that y t is equal to y t minus 1 plus mu t and x t is equal to x t minus 1 plus epsilon t. If we run a regression between y t and x t, then we would obtain y t is equal to alpha plus rho x t plus uh, v t. Despite lack of any causal relationship, we are likely to find a significant t ratio <coughs> for the null hypothesis h0, which is that rho is equal to 0. The problem is that the t-test of rho equal to 0 is not normal distribution with mean 0 and 1 even asymptotically. The standard asymptotic distribution theory does not apply when variables have unit root. So it is important to discriminate 
between two situations. The first situation of his spurious regressions, which denotes apparently significant relationship between unrelated series and the genuine relationships which arise when the time series are co-integrated. The basic crux of the matter is that all time series regressions are not spurious. We would need to test this formally too. As Granger notes, a test for co-integration can be thought of as a pretest to avoid spurious regression situations. Let us now move on and try to understand a very important concept known as error correction mechanism. The error correction mechanism was first used by J.D. Sargon and was later popularized by Grinzer in 1987. Hence, it is also known as Grenzer representation theorem. As the name suggests, it simply means correcting for disequilibrium, a function of delta x and mu, where mu is used to correct the disequilibrium. The above mentioned expression states that the change in the dependent variable y is a function of two factors. Firstly, a change in the independent variable x and a measure of disequilibrium that is mu. So if mu is not equal to zero, equilibrium needs to be established and accordingly y changes to get back to equilibrium. The error correction mechanism describes the short run dynamics. If xt and yt are co-integrated, then there is a long term relationship between them. However, in the short run, there may be a possibility of disequilibrium. So the error term can be treated as an equilibrium error and this can be used to tie the short run behavior to the long run value. So we have seen that if the two series are co-integrated, then according to Angel Granger theorem, there exists error correction mechanism which could be represented as follows, where we can write delta yt equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 delta xt plus summation mu t minus i plus epsilon t. The summation of mu t minus i runs from i equal to 0 to m. Here we need to correct the expression due to the existence of disequilibrium and reach the initial point of equilibrium. So the term which is mu t minus i, i ranging from 0 to m, that is the term which is to be corrected for. So let us try to understand this process by using an example. Consider the model. Let's say we have delta PCE t equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 into delta PDI t plus beta 2 mu t minus 1 plus epsilon t, where delta as usual denotes the first difference operator, epsilon t is the random error term, and mu t minus 1 is equal to PCE t minus 1 minus beta 1 minus beta 2 PDI t minus 1. That is the one period lack value of the error from the co-integrating regression. PDI is nothing but the personal disposable income and PC is the, is the personal consumption expenditure. Therefore, the above equation states that delta PCE depends on delta PDI and also on equilibrium error term. If the latter is known zero, then the model is out of equilibrium. Suppose delta PDI is zero and mu t minus one is positive. This means PCE t minus one is too high to be in equilibrium that is PCE t minus 1 is above its equilibrium value of beta 0 plus beta 1 PDI t minus 1. Since beta 2 is expected to be negative, therefore the term beta 2 mu t minus 1 is negative and therefore delta PCE t will be negative to restore the equilibrium. 
What does it mean? It means that if PCET is above its equilibrium value, it will start falling in the next period to correct the equilibrium error. Hence the name error correction mechanism or ECM. Grenzer representation theorem states that if two variables are co-integrated, then the relationship between the two can be expressed as an error correction mechanism. Let us now try to summarize what we have learned in this module. So I am sure dear students that we have learned the following things in this module. First, by the term cointegration, we have learned that it means that even though the series are not stationary in nature, a linear combination of the two can be stationary. We have also learned that the Engel-Grenzer test co-integrating regression Durbin-Watson test, augmenting Engel-Grenzer test and Johansson's test are used to find whether two or more time series are co-integrated. We have also explored how Engel-Grenzer test is the test developed by Engel and Grenzer to identify the co-integration level in a model where the difference of error terms is considered to test it. The model value is then compared with critical values identified by Engel and Granger to test the presence of cointegration. Same is the case with augmented Engel Granger test, except in this case we initially augment the values with respect to dependent variables first. We have also learned that cointegrating regression Durbin Watson test, or also known as CRDW, uses the Durbin Watson test to test the stationarity of the series and hence identify cointegration in the model. Johansson's test determines the number of cointegrating vectors in a model and also to estimate the distinct relationships between them. The model uses generalization of the Dickey-Fuller test. We have also learned that cointegration between two or more time series basically implies that there exists a long-term relationship or equilibrium among them. We have also in the end tried to look at the error correction mechanism which was popularized by Engel and Granger. Error correction mechanism or ECM is a means of reconciling the short-run behavior of an economic variable with its long-run behavior. The Grenzel representation theorem states that if two variables are co-integrated, then the relationship between the two can be expressed as an error correction mechanism.